So how long were you trading until you actually started making money? I was negative for like two and a half years, bro. I was in so deep that I had no other choice. What's the largest profit you made in a single day of trading? $121,000 in one single day. I thought once I was gonna make my first mill, I thought I was gonna just be set for life. I made a mill and I felt like a bitch. I mean this, I even get goosebumps. Bro, people will take a bullet for me, bro. This guy comes and like, bro, dude, thank you so much, man. I appreciate everything you do. And you know, I just think it's a normal, you know, fan taking a picture. He's like, dude, but like, I don't think you understand what you've done for me. I'm like, well, what have I done for you? He's like, bro, come outside. Bro, the dude bought a Maybach with the trades that I had been sending on Instagram. <laughs>
you can build an edge off of it. So people that think it's a scam is probably because there's a bunch of people out there selling some bullshit or, you know, all these fugazi ass gurus, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is sucks because it gives the business a bad rep. But the reality of the situation is that if you look, if you look a little bit deeper than just the clickbait stuff, it actually, you know, it actually works. So how, so how long were you trading until you actually started making money? Bro, I was negative for like two and a half years, bro. Yeah, so, that's okay. Yeah. That, there you go. That makes yeah. sense. You didn't even think to stop or quit or anything like that. I was in so deep that I had no other choice. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'm down like 10 G's, bro. My, I, no, I was down 30. Oh, okay. yeah, I was okay. down 30. So my parents found out about it when I was a year in. And I was so like, you know, when you're so niched in into something, you have so much faith into it that you just got to do it or you got to do it. There's nothing yeah. else you can do. My parents found out I wasn't going to college and then they found that I was trading and they found that I was losing money. Mm. And they're like, you see, you're a fucking waste. You're not doing anything. And, no. I'm like, and that just put more fuel to the fire. Of course. And I'm like, now there's no other option than yeah, making yeah. this show work out. Cause I see, I see you, um, you post a lot of content with your dad. Yeah. My dad. Yeah. So how, how is it now looking back and, <laughs> and maybe some of the things he said to you five years ago compared to now what he sees, he sees your success. It definitely hurt at the time a lot. I, yeah. I, I got, super isolated i was just by myself in the closet because i used to train in the closet in my parents house and then now it's almost like i told you so but i don't want to rub it in his face yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm just like like here's the lambo we'll take it for the week that's kind of like <laughs> you know i mean? told you yeah, so here's yeah. the lambo like, right bro, he knows now he knows now i'm in a position now where he can't tell me anything but i want to i want to understand you're down 30k yeah and how does that turn around for you though so i was losing consecutive like literally consecutively for two years and i hadn't figured out what i was doing wrong right i thought it was always a different strategy and I was just hopping from strategy to strategy to strategy, but it wasn't a strategy. It was just risk management. Okay. A lot of people come into trading with hundred bucks, two, 300 bucks, and they want to turn it into hundred K, yeah. which you could do that. Don't get me wrong, but the odds of that happening are slim to none. Mm. So you have to come to the market with a real amount of money. And then you, you risk a small percentage of the account and then you scale it over time. Okay. Nobody has that longevity vision right at the beginning. And I didn't. And after, you know, kind of after you're getting punched in the face a bunch of times, you know, you get knocked out. You realize that if you're going to get into a fight, you got to put your hands up. You know what I mean? Play yeah. some defense. <laughs> you got yeah. you to you play defense. Yeah. And when you get an opening, then you hit. Yeah. So that's what I did. I, I got tired of getting, getting punched in the face. I started putting my hands up, which is, you know, risking less amount of money. Okay. And I got funded. And as soon as I got funded... Three to six months after that, I started, you know, using risk management. I got funded and I got a payout for 28K, which made back all the losses and it paid back for the expenses for a whole year. Damn. So I left, I left Dunkin after that. <laughs> go. How, how good was that? Quitting yeah. Dunkin Donuts. I mean, it was, it was lit, but it, it put me in a position where it's like, all right, now this, it's, it's this yeah. or it's this. This is like, how you make money now. Yeah. Because so in terms of getting funded, how did that work for you? Well, I, again, I, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it with risking such a little amount of the money. Like, imagine I tell you right now, all right, for you to be successful in trading, you have to risk 1%. Yeah. You say, fuck that. That's nothing. Yeah. yeah. But when you do 1% of 100K, it starts making a little bit more sense. Yeah. True. So that, that's what I started doing. I got funded with 100K and then I got a $28,000 payout because then I, once I started making more money, I started risking 2 3%. And then since you have positive risk to reward, it just... You know, extra skyrocket. Yeah, it just yeah. grows. So you make that 28K, you quit Duncan. Yeah. And you're like, I'm all in here. I had no other option. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's it's almost like I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm like, all right, this is it. You know, this is a success. Yeah. And I think three months down the road from that, I lose the funded account. So now I'm like panicking. I'm like, holy fuck. Okay. Like now. The whole 100K? I, I lost everything. Yeah. yeah. But I still had reserves where I had a whole year worth of my money, uh, of my monthly expenses paid for. Okay. So I'm like, all right, I can literally not move a finger for another year. I live in my parents' house. I have no expenses. You know, my mom cooks every day. Like, I'm good. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm at home. So I got a year to figure this shit out again. And if I made it work in about two and a half years not knowing anything, now after a year of already, you know, knowing what to do, I yeah. can figure it out. So I just did it again, got funded again, and I just scaled it. Back yeah. And that. when you say get funded, for anybody who's watching that doesn't fully understand what that means, maybe break that down quickly. So there's evaluation companies out there that they test your skill set to see if you're worthy of managing money. So a problem with a lot of traders out there that are skillful and they know what they're doing, they don't have access to money, okay. which is a very normal thing. Sure. But learning the skill set is something that anybody and everybody can do. You're yeah. a couple YouTube videos away and you're a couple 500 hours from market watch time to understand how the market works. Mm -hmm. It's very simple, but not everybody has access to money. So now there's these evaluation funding companies out there that they have a two-step evaluation where you have to make a certain percentage of money in under a certain period of time 
to see if you're worthy of this skill set on a larger amount of money. Mm, okay. So if you pass the first evaluation, for example, my test was 10% in 30 days. Okay. So I made 10% in 30 days. Then the second step is 5% in 60 days. So they lower your profit target and then they lengthen the time for ah, you to do it. Okay. So like, all right, so if you made the first, if you pass the first one and it was hard with target percentage and time-wise, which is shorter, all right, now show me smaller percentage in more time. Let's see if it was just a quick, you know. If it was luck, luck maybe. If it was luck. Yeah. So after the second time that you pass it, now you get funded the original amount and then you do a revenue share on whatever you make. Okay. So you do a 70, 30, 80, 20, 90, 10, whatever they have at the yeah. time going yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're pretty much taking a risk with the money because you could just blow it. Yeah. So now on the third steps, you're, you've you gone through it pretty much three times. So the odds of you blowing it then shouldn't be that high because you Fair. have passed the challenges. You know what I mean? A yes. lot of people still do blow it because now they're emotionally attached to this money that they just got. But they at least make money for a month or two. And if they blow it, whatever, you know, they make some money. Out yeah. Of it. At that point. Yeah, so yeah. At, what, at what point maybe... As we continue your your journey here, at what point do you say, okay, I'm good enough where I can start helping people now? Honestly, that that was never the goal, dude. Like, yeah. Yeah, like it was just never. I, I, my goal was just to trade and just live my life and do whatever I wanted. Sure. But then it got to the point where I think I was year three and a half in, so I was already profitable for a whole year. I had bought my first car or my first more expensive car. I had a um, I had a Maybach. I always wanted a Maybach. That was was the first car I bought myself. Yeah. (laughs) So I I bought a Maybach and then I bought a Rolex and I'm getting ready to move out. And I'm like, bro, why the fuck don't I just start like posting all this shit to get girls? I'm like, yo, I like, cause I I don't have Instagram. (laughs) I mean, I have Instagram, but I don't have a following. And I'm like, you know what? Like I made it out, you know, I made it out from the regular people in high school. Let me start, you know, getting these girls. Start showing them what just happened. Let me start getting some (laughs) sauce. And it just blew the fuck up out of nowhere, bro. Because people were like, dude, how do you do it? Where the results coming from? Because people know me from high school. You get me? People know I wasn't the best student. And I I went to a big high school and it just spread throughout the whole entire high school. And I had friends in another high school, which I was always back and forth. I would skip high school, go to the other one and like, you know, round, like stuff like that. And it just spread through that whole area. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dude, let's just make this bigger. Just start posting more about it. Girls are coming now from Brickle, like they're coming <laughs> from everywhere. So I just kept posting it. And then it just got to the point where it, it turned into a community of people that fell in love with trading how I did. Yeah, yeah, because you got something pretty crazy right now. Like, obviously, you got the followers, but like, there's a difference. There's followers and there's community. Yeah, dude, mm-hmm. I have people that would. I, I mean this. I even get goosebumps. Bro, people will take a bullet for me, bro. Yeah. yeah. Like people will legit stand in front of a bus for the stuff that I've done for them. Well, I was going to say, it's, that's because you've changed people's lives. Yeah, bro. I make people money, dude. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. Lot, <laughs> yeah. I make people a lot of money because yeah. you can, you can be a, a, a content creator and you can have following and they might love you. Mm-hmm. But if you don't do something for them, like how you guys, how you guys give back to them and you give people cash and you're yeah. always constantly giving back, they won't be like a diehard it's true. fan. You know, Facts. you won't have a community. Bro, I make people money every single day for free. I don't charge people a dollar, bro. Like I just post it on my Instagram. It's like, look, this is what's going to happen. This is the result and that's it. Yeah, yeah. people are just copying your trades just based off that. I mean, they, 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 they get the idea from the Instagram story and then mm-hmm. you can take that same approach to any market out there. True. And that's, that's set and forget, right? That's set and forget. That's set and forget. See, yeah, I don't even know what the fuck that means, but I know what it means, though. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? You set I think it means you lock in, a tra- lock in a trade and, and you leave it. Let it, it. Ride, yeah, yeah, you set right? and forget. Set and forget. Yeah. See, we're learning. <laughs> so when does the Rocket 21 challenge come? So Rocket 21 came about when the evaluation process that I took was very hard. So okay. it was 10% in 30 days and then 5% in 60 days. So I came up with the idea that let's just remove the 10%. Let's make it 8%. And fuck the 30 days, because sometimes the market is just super hard in a certain time. Let's say it's a uh, slow season or winter or whatever. There's not much volatility. So if you bought a challenge in that time, you're kind of fucked, right? Yeah. You set yourself up for failure and then you have to buy another one. So okay. I hated that shit because I went through that shit myself. So let's lower the profit target and let's remove the time limit. So you can make the 8% however long you take. If you want to take 30 days, 60 days a year, however long you want to take, there's no rush, take your time. And then on the second evaluation process, we're going to make it 4%. And then unlimited time as well. Oh wow! So, oh, the, so, so the pressure of, of time yeah. is not an issue. You remove anymore. that completely because yeah. we understand that time in trade, like you can't time success. You can't mm. time when the market's going to give you a good opportunity. You can't time that you're going to be in the right headspace to take the trade. So we just removed all the emotional barriers that a trader can have, and we just stuck it straight to the strategy. So the, the other guys must hate you. 
Oh yeah, that's why. You flipped that. You flipped that shit on its head. Yeah, bro. We were number six in the world in under a year. That's fucking. Yeah. Nice. Been un- under a year. And under a year. Oh my god. And so now, and so now, when you're funding these guys, like you guys are essentially putting up the cash for them. Yeah. It's essentially, it's not the full percentage of the account because we have to see their evaluation, see what type of trader they are. Yes. Based off of the data that we get from the trader, then we get that strategy. And then we have a strategy that depends if they're a high risk trader, they're a low risk trader, if they're going to constantly, let's say, trade the same pair, if they're going to trade the same times, yeah. if they're going to trade the same volume, whatever, like the same lot size, do they change their lot size? All this is data that goes into a system. And then we have a strategy based off of that data. Like there's there's so much data points out there that it's it's ridiculous. So everyone's getting funded differently then. Everyone's getting funded differently, and then there's different risks per trader. Every trader is completely different. Okay. And how many how many people would you say you funded up until now? Oh man, I think so. Last month there was over ten thousand challenges that were like t- over ten thousand traders that took challenges. That took the challenge. We probably have a twenty five percent success rate. Wow. And then from the twenty five percent, people probably a 30 to 40% get more than two payouts. Because a lot okay. of people after the second payout, they think they're the king of the world. They think they're the shit. You know, so they run off it. on their own. And then, no, then they blow the account. Uh, oh, oh, they yeah. go too crazy. They go too crazy and then they blow the account. Yeah. But at least they got some payouts from it. You know, they got some profits. Yeah. But I don't know. I would have to like actually like dig down and like yeah, figure yeah. out that number. You think it's hundreds? You think it's thousands? Definitely thousands. For sure yeah, thousands. That's insane, bro. But if, if you think about it, the, the success percentage in trading is so much higher than any any other industry in the world like let's say right now really? how many bro how many people do you think go to get drafted for the nba just saying numbers oh bro it's gonna, be, it, it's gonna it's be less than one percent no 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 but like what's like 50 like, oh, how, a year like no no like how many people do you think go to the nba drafts for 2024 oh okay like to go watch it no how many people, no, how many people are up for up for getting drafted oh. yeah like how many people do you think work for to go get drafted Hundred thousand players oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah. how many make it so what is it two couple, two couple three rounds yeah it's like What's 100 maybe 200? that's under one percent yeah, yeah yeah that's what i'm saying yeah, from a hundred thousand traders that take a challenge or just get into trading let's say the success is 10 percent or five percent uh-huh. so what you're saying is that if anyone's trying to make the nba fuck that <laughs> call you <laughs> <laughs> fuck that, and you're bro. gonna teach him how to trade yeah bro fuck that like you'll be you're, the odds of you being successful in trading is much higher than any other profession out there hey, but bro what's crazy is because you're saying this and i know a lot of people are gonna listen to this and be like this guy's capping, bro. <laughs> this guy, I'm telling yeah. you, I'm, tell, I'm just telling well, you. Well, people, you know what it is? A lot of people have bad experiences when it comes to trading or they've been guided the wrong way. Like you said, these Fugazi gurus or whatever. So, so I feel okay. like it's a breath of fresh air to, to hear what you're and, saying. And I want to understand. So I, I, I see you, obviously you put like, you put like just like your thoughts about the market, like on IG. So it's like almost like your free yeah. knowledge. Then you have the community, right? Of course. Is it on Discord or? Telegram. Or it's right? Telegram. Telegram. Yeah. And that's completely free. Free. It's a free Telegram, man. Yeah. So hold on a second. You're not selling anything. I mean, I have a course that I opened up about six months ago. Okay, okay, but that, I'm saying like yeah. on, on like a on the and or on like on the community the no, channel. That's it. Like. that's it. No, it's, it's it's free. Everything's free. Like that's yeah. that's my motto. My motto is I wanted to be the guy that I wish I had when I started trading. So, bro, no wonder people will literally take a bullet for you. Yes, bro. That's that's why it's just grown so big, dude. Yeah, because everybody facts. out there, they'll post like they'll post a Lambo, they'll post this, and like, but wait, if you want more, pay here. Yeah. Say, yep. fuck that. I'll show you the Lambo. I'll show you everything and just join. It's free. Just go in. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't need your hundred bucks or your 20 bucks. For me, I get so much more, gra- I, I get so much more energy to keep doing it again and again and again. When I get somebody out there that's working a forklift job or that's working an Amazon job and that be like, bro, you just paid for my whole week. I can take the week off or you just post. Yeah. yeah that's a beautiful it. feeling. Like, like, makes it so much better. Bro, like for us, it's on a smaller scale, but like, that's why we don't sell our audience shit. Cause yeah. like we're like we make money already. Yeah. I'm not even here to try to monetize on you straight up. Yeah, you, you yeah you guys are just doing this because you guys have passion for it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And then like yeah, when 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 we do like then we're just now we start doing these cash giveaways. We're gonna run one. Yeah, we're gonna run. It's one. just jokes. Like it's just sick to like just give people shit. It just feels amazing. I mean, if you think about it, right? Like let's say you make ten M's, right? You yeah. have ten M's in a bank account. You buy you know the cars. You buy rental properties. You kind of set yourself up that you pretty much don't have to move a finger for the rest of your life, right? Yeah. What the fuck else do you do? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. kind of you kind of get bored. So yeah. for me, it's just constantly setting myself up with new challenges, mm. so I don't get bored. 
Yes. I'm very young, bro. And I've heard plenty of stories out there that people that they hit, you know, success super fast and they get depressed. They get all these type of emotions, suicidal and all this yeah. shit. And I don't want to get to that. You know what I mean, yeah, I yeah. just want to constantly chat. I want to get better every single year and never hit a peak or ever hit a high point that there's no second mountain. Yeah. yeah. So that way it, it never stops. You, you know want to get like, comfortable. Never. Yeah. You just life keeps going. Right now, you're just making money from your trades. My trades. And then if you fund people and they do well, yeah. the split, whatever and, yeah, it is. Yeah, and, and then if you want to get the course, the course is there. Like, True. It's, it's literally link in the bio. Look at it whenever you want. I like, was going to say, I've never seen you promo. Uh, yeah, I've never even seen you promo. I've never, I never seen you promo. Ever. I never push my course ever. I think I, I probably push it once every two, three months because yeah. I'll hit a crazy trade. I'll make 100K. I'm like... Don't stop, stop DMing me. How do I do it? Just, it's just there. It's there if you yeah, want. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Leave yeah. me alone. Yeah, yeah. So, so wait, okay. So when, when does like, cause obviously you're making money now, your, your, you know, your socials are kind of growing, which like, I feel like in, in your niche, you show the fucking Cullinan, you show the Lambo, you show this stuff. Obviously people are like, who is this guy? What the fuck is he doing? Whatever. You start building your, your personal brand, I guess. Um, and that kind of puts you in a position now where, <clears throat> other people with massive brands want to link with you. So very recently, I'm sure anyone who follows you knows what's good. You've been linking it with Steve a lot. Steve yeah. will do it. Yeah. How did that come to be? Steve's, Steve's fried, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Steve's nuts. What right? of a kind, yeah. bro. Yeah. Whatever you guys see from the content out there, that's actually Steve. That's yeah. not a, that's not a yeah. made of character. Yeah. If anything, what comes out in the video is a tuned down level yes. of who Steve really is. It's crazy. But it just came about mutual friends. I do poker nights all the time. Yeah. I do them, you know, here in the house. And I, I've been playing with Steiny for, you know, for a year. I've been playing with the whole TPT team. Yeah. I've been playing with Steve's, you know, friends, his brothers. And it just got to the point where it just happened. You get me? Just, yeah. just over time because... I don't want to say like real, recognize real or whatever. It's kind of like, it yeah, it's kind of cringy, you know yeah. what I mean? But I guess it, it just, you know, clicked, you know, like, you know, great minds think, think alike. And I think it's super dope. Like what I'm saying, constantly getting into a new challenge and meeting new people. I was fucking gambling with Dana White. Like who, seen that who can say they could fucking do that shit you know what i mean no, it's, yeah. it's kind of you, yeah. you just came back from a trip yeah i i just came i haven't slept so <laughs> I, i'm here you know we, we appreciate that no no bro this, <laughs> I, I, but this this right here excites me more than winning a trade yeah i, I promise you guys connect connecting with other people that are about the grind that they're yeah. out there doing whatever it takes it's dope you know what i mean like yeah. you know what 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 other what satisfaction do i get about winning another trade you know I mean? i've been doing this forever and i'm gonna keep doing it forever but i'll probably see you guys like once a month so mm, true. It's, I'd, I'd rather like connect with this more than with absolutely you know, plus i feel like you're just automatic with trading now if you wanted to go upstairs and make 10k yeah in the next I, half hour you're yeah. gonna go do it <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I, you know? I could just go do that real quick yeah, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> how was the trip though the, bro, was, you guys were wiling out yeah dude it was wild so did the grinch thing too well, you, you did the christmas did brazil by the way I did maybe brazil. we backtracked to brazil for a second well there's something that looked <laughs> fucked well you way. guys don't know something about brazil nobody in the english market knows anything about what I happened don't know, in i don't know fuck all about brazil you, I don't know if you saw the video that I posted when I was in Brazil. The yeah. guy that had the AK that was smoking the cigar, uh -huh. the guy was like wanted, supposedly. He's been on the run for six, seven years. Holy they fuck. had no idea where he was at. And I have no fucking clue who the guy is. And it's my first time in Brazil in the favelas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I posted the video and it went ultra mega viral in Brazil. They're like, yo, we have spotted this guy that we have been looking for. <gasps> He's been on the run and we have located him thanks to this guy. Oh my God. I'm like, yo, whoa, no, chill. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who that guy is, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, yeah, now this, this guy is affiliated with them. They said that I was affiliated with the no, cartel with, there yeah, or something yeah. oh i'm like whoa God. whoa bro for, first of all i don't even speak portuguese you know yeah, what i, mean? yeah, I don't yeah. even know who the fuck these people are yeah and now i'm where i'm scared for my life yeah, <laughs> yeah i just exposed like a chapo uh -huh. of brazil you oh know my what God. i mean but nobody knows that because the articles that come out are in portuguese they're they're in brazilian okay yeah. i figured that out because i have an attorney that he watches everything i do and he tells me he's like dude don't leave the united states or you're fucked because Interpol is looking at you for what the fuck you did. Come on, Yeah, and bro. I'm like, dude, first of all, what did I do? <laughs> I have no idea what I did. And then he, he explained to me the whole situation. He's like, bro, just I'll bring clarity to the whole situation. And as of right now, it's 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 clear. It's it's good. Wow. But it, it was it was it was bad for about a week because they had no idea. You know, they, they just they just get the big picture. Sure. We found El Chapo. Thanks to this guy. 
That's but then they want to figure crazy. out who's this guy. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And then they go down the, I guess, the chain. And like, you know, why is he there? Exactly. All these different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you nervous though to go in the favelas? Because, bro, the way that shit looked, like, I was scared <laughs> for my life, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I don't know if maybe because I trust Steve with my life. Yeah. But, bro, I feel safer there than here. Wow. Come I on, swear, bro. bro I, don't, I don't know if it's because the vibes that I got from those guys there or if it's because of the way they treated us. Mm. But I felt like, dude, nobody was fucking with us, bro. Yeah. No, not even the cops, bro. The cops would see us and they'd run the other way. Like, you're, you're not fucking with us. Stop. Yeah, yeah. So I felt safer there than I did here. I, there was not one period or one second that I, bro, I had my chain on. I had my Richard Mill on there. Like, I was there. Bro, I had my Richard Mill do that shit, bro. And it, I was good. Like, you right around through South Beach and you'll probably get killed versus a hundred percent. A hundred percent. But remember, like, we're going with the guys. Like, we're going with, with the, top the top guys. So top stars. I, I'm like, when I'm watching that shit, bro, I'm like, how the fuck are they even <laughs> connected like to that? Well, I know Steve had gone before. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So it was the second time. So yeah, Steve has connections with all that. Yeah. yeah. But, well, it but, takes okay. him one time. One time to get there and then he yeah. links also, up with everyone. But also that, that speaks to like who he is though. Because you can't oh. just pull up no. to the favelas like that <laughs> no, no, and be plugged in like that yeah. and respected. You know what I'm saying? 100%. And like I, taken care of. I mean, dude, like from the second we land in the airport, this guy's handing out money. You know what I mean? Of well, course. So, yeah, so he he's giving back to the whole community. Yeah. It, it makes the, the favela that Steve's pulling up to, because I don't know if you guys know, but there's over 200, 300 favelas in all of Brazil. I didn't, neither did I. There and we one. were at like the number one. <laughs> like yeah, all of them. Yeah. We were like in the favelas of like the boss of all the little favela guys. Okay. okay. And they they appreciate what he does because it brings value to that favela yeah. that Steve's giving out money to everybody and stuff. So. so while you're there though, something kind of fucked up happens. You come home. Oh. You come <laughs> yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. And things are little, looking a little different at home. Yeah, man. So what happened? What happened, bro, when you got back? So... I get back from the favelas and then they, they robbed my house, bro. They had broken into my house. I had a home invasion, bro. Uh, crazy, man. How, like, so like you had no idea. You just walked in your house. You're like, bro, what the fuck happened? So like, how'd it I, go down? I have a leopard cat line, whatever. You know <laughs> what I mean? I have a one of one cat and yeah. this cat's a fucking wild one. It'll probably attack me in the middle of this interview right now. <laughs> so I open the door to my house and I see shit all over the floor. And I'm like, oh, this fucking cat fucked it up. Because I, I left the cat alone for like two, three days. Okay. Cats take care of themselves. They had plenty of food, water, everything. I'm like, bro, this fucking cat fucked everything up. And as I keep walking through the house, I see a chair completely down. And I'm like, how the fuck does that happen? But whatever. And I keep going through the house and then I see a broken window. And oh, then fuck. the door completely opened. And I'm like, oh, this is something completely different. And I start walking up through the stairs. Like I have like fucking rifle. Like I'm, I'm ready to go. I, I, like I literally don't know what happened. I, yeah. I don't know if a homeless came in. I don't know. Because they, did, like, they didn't take my cars or they didn't take my guns. So I literally don't know what's going on. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm walking through the house like with my rifle. I go to my office. They had just pretty much gone through all my paperwork. I guess they were looking for cash or stuff. And they didn't take my monitors. They didn't take my other gun in there. They didn't take my titles of my cars. Like I have the titles of my cars that were on the desk with the car key. Wow. And they didn't take it. And, but then I go to my room and that's where like the mess is. They broke into my room. They broke into my safe. They took my Rolexes, my EPs. They took some cash. Oh, they took my fucking Balenciaga slides. Like what the fuck? Well, fucking, <laughs> but they left the I mean? cars? <laughs> but they left the cars. Maybe they got spooked. Uh, I don't know. But it, it was definitely somebody that was of my circle. Yeah. It was definitely somebody that has been to my house before because wow. they didn't open two rooms because I have fingerprint locks on all the doors. Okay. So you can't open a door without my fingerprint or the code. Yeah. And they didn't bust down the other two doors because there's nothing in there. They were, one was like a studio and the so other one was just so they knew. already knew which so they, rooms yeah. to go to. So they already knew what rooms to go into, bro. So was, What do you think the total value of, of what you lost was? They missed a lot of shit. Yeah. These guys were fucking idiots, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, they, yeah. they left the walkie-talkie. They when they one of them went in, they broke or they cut themselves with the broken glass. They left blood all over like the window and stuff. So they're already they're already, you know, getting caught because yeah. they have literally DNA. And <laughs> these guys are idiots. But probably total value, maybe 50, 60k really wasn't much. Yeah. yeah. They just did it more looking for the watch, looking for the chains. And I literally had it in my sock drawer, the first drawer. 
I, I in the safe I don't have anything. I just had probably like 20, 30k in cash, yeah. and then I had two Rolexes that were outside. Yeah. Because I was like, should I take them? Should I not take them? And I'm like, you know, I'll just leave them there and I'll hide them when I get back. You know, I, yeah. I, no, I never think. Not I mean, thinking about yeah, that. Yeah. No, no one's fucking thinking of that. But then I had the Richard. I had everything else, like more chains and jewelry inside of the sock drawer. And they didn't take any of that stuff. They oh my like, god. They just went for the big stuff that they thought stuff was in there. And did you have an idea who it was or not? I can I can point a lot of shady people, you know, that okay, can yeah. potentially know somebody or something, mm -hmm. but I rather put the blame on myself. It's my fault for I guess having my doors open to everybody because I yeah. never thought something like this would ever happen. Sure. So it's if, if anything, it's my fault. You know, yeah. I, I also did like a full house tour on YouTube. Got like 300k views. This is where I hide the Rolexes. I literally, cash. I did that. I did that in the video. So. <laughs> this is my safe. This yeah. is my password. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not doing that again. So, so then Damn. you you made a move though to this to this. Yeah. Spot. So they broke into my house on a Thursday. That's when I got back, and then I'm in this new house by like Wednesday. So yeah, I wow. yeah I completely. And you had no cameras, nothing. At that I had cameras, bro. But yeah. I'm a fucking idiot and I post on social media where my cat, like, because crazy shit happens in my house. So I just get little clips and I just post it just for entertainment. Yeah. And they knew where the cameras were and they went through the outside of the house and they clipped the Wi Fi, they clipped the cable, they clipped the ground, they clipped everything. Because you're, oh, you're filming like, oh, just like random funny like, yeah, shit, like random whatever, funny. like your moonwalking videos. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But then people are like zooming in on the back, like, yeah. oh. So now, it, this house is literally zombie proof. Like you're not getting in here. Yeah. Uh, cables are under the ground. You can't cut cables. There's generators. Like it, like what they did is they cut the power to the house. So when you cut the power, all the lights turn off. And then when you cut the Wi-Fi, the cameras stop recording because they're not connected to anything. So they have yes. no power and no Wi-Fi. So it was yeah, yeah I was yeah. blind. Wow. Completely blind. Oh, yeah. But it got you. Now here, you're bro. safe now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now it's a beautiful place. I wish they come back. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, pull up. So how's it been? You you told me you're single too, right? Yeah, I'm single. Yeah. How's that been? I guess with all the success that's coming and all the money that's coming, how's that been trying to be in a relationship or are you even trying to be, or even being in Miami and trying to be in a relationship? Yeah, bro, it's, 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 it's difficult, bro. You literally don't know if a girl wants you for who you are or for what you have. So mm -hmm. I have a strategy on getting girls. Of to, course so you yeah, do. That. To, okay. let, let's hear it. Yeah, 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 I have Set a set forget. Forget strategy. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you got to tell yeah. us now. No, but like I, I have a strategy to see if she's a real one or she's not. Okay. So I don't, I don't do the DMs anymore. I, I obviously that's easy. You DM a girl, whatever. But I I literally can't tell if she wants me for me or if for what I have. Yeah. So if I'm gonna attempt to take a girl serious, it has to I have to meet you either completely random or through a mutual friend, but not let her know who I am. Mm. You know I mean, like if you. What's my, my name is Juan. Nice to meet you. You know what I mean? I don't have are Instagram. You doing a, are you doing a different name? Like yeah, yeah. Fake completely, name, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fake <laughs> name. A different number. Because if yeah. you add... See, I learned from experience. Because if you add the number, then you can find the contact through Instagram yep. and it could just pop up. Yep. So I give them another number that it has no Instagram. So it's not connected. So you... Hold on a second. You got a double phone just for dating? No, I have four phones. So oh. I just get... <laughs> I well, just, one of them is for dating broads. Yeah, one, one is just for dating girls that I, <laughs> Yo, that I have no idea. You're doing this all wrong, bro. I've been fucking up this <laughs> whole time. You're doing different platforms. You need a whole other phone. Bro. I mean, it, it just depends. What do you want? Like, do you want a real one or do you just want to have fun? You yeah, get me? yeah, yeah. So, you know, you kind of have both. But I think that's a battle that us men go through. It's like, mm. do we want a real one or do we just want to keep fucking around? Bro, it's so fucked, dude. Like, when I have a real one, it's like, bro, I just want to fuck around. Yeah. And when I fuck around, it's like, bro, I just want a real one. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> You're just yeah, going back and forth. Because you always want what you, what, what you can't have or what you don't have yeah right? that's a fact so you should probably like okay so you give them the fake number mm -hmm. you're one mm -hmm. you pick them up in the rally car no hell no no <laughs> i have a i have a comp i have literally like um you know what a tundra is like a toyota yeah. tundra so i pick them up in the tundra Shut up, yeah bro. and i'll take them to somewhere normal you know yeah. we'll just go to like a food truck you yeah. know we'll have some food truck stuff and i just get i just get your vibe you get me yeah. and i you know i'm a gentleman i'm gonna pay for the meal i'm gonna take you back home and we'll just keep texting and if yeah. and if i feel the next day that you're still interested in me we'll go on a second date okay test it out again and then on the third date I heard it with the sneak attack 101. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? Wait, what do you do, bro? I pull up in the Lambo. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. I mean, it's like, okay. all right, so I'm sorry. My name's actually Alex, and I'm actually this guy. I was going to say, when do they meet the real Alex? The th on the third, third one. On the third, third one, day. yeah. And what do they have to do to prove to you that they're not there for the money? So I guess, you, I mean, you know, when you just get a vibe, you, yeah. you kind of just feel it. It's true. And I do my research on her through mutual friends. So obviously I know what her Instagram is because, you know, you figure it out either through the number yeah. or you can find it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'll ask mutual friends, like, what's the deal? What's going on? 
and um re like realistically it just i have to feel it i have to feel if mm -hmm. if you're worthy of it or not this I've, I've only had three girls that i've done the the this the, the third date the third date okay and then a lot of them i just leave them on the second what's the reaction when you pull up in the lambo bro, they trip the fuck out 100 percent. and not gonna lie all of them they've gotten mad they're like oh why'd you lie to me you're a liar you're this or that but then they after i explain to them they they get it yeah, yeah. That's it's, a fucking, yo, that's I'm a gonna, crazy treat, though. You know what I mean? It's not bad, though. Yeah, I mean, three bro. dates? Yeah, three dates. Well, right now you're single. You're trying to be single? I'm on that. I don't know what I want. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, guess, I guess from what you just said, you would want someone that's like low key. Yeah, yeah. I always try and target low key. Bro, I'm going to go bro, date I, a, a OnlyFans girl. Bro, all these, bro, bro, I'll tell you right now, yeah. the low key girls are 25,000 times better than any OnlyFans girls. Like these OnlyFans yeah, girls bro. are fucking whack, dude. What yeah. are you saying? Like, better where? Everywhere, okay. yeah. everywhere, bro. <laughs> okay. that these OnlyFans girl, they swear they're entitled to to things. Yeah, and I get it. Whatever, cool. You got a bag, but you know, like, yes, your value of a bag has gone up, but like the value of you has gone down. Yeah. Mm. So you can't really be entitled to much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you're entitled because you have a bag, well, then sorry, like that's not for me. You get yeah. me? So my main target right now is just low key or normal girls. Like if she, if she if she wears scrubs. That's the one. That's like the, one. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. You go that's pick her up one. from her shift at the hospital. <laughs> that's the one. You know what I mean? You know, I'm curious from from like your eyes because we talk about this all the time. Like hyper successful men, you know, they eventually maybe want a family, a wife, or whatever. Like whether you get married or not, but they have like their their main girl, uh -huh. but then also like maybe a couple like side ones. You know, <laughs> like yeah. like or, the, or <clears throat> maybe not side things, but that they're just able to like. Get, do, get, do yeah, what they want yeah get it off on the yeah, side okay, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. kind of like mutually understood okay okay, okay. you know uh -huh. is that is that something you're looking for well or what you would want to do <laughs> okay, okay because yo listen you're young you're yeah. 23 by the way i don't know if we mentioned that on this podcast yeah. which is fucking crazy yeah, okay yeah. so like you've now put yourself at such a high level yeah where in my eyes when i have this argument i think you have the leverage to say yeah, this is how I want to, if I'm going to get into some sort of relationship or situationship or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> that I have the leverage to do that. So I've, I've tried, right? Okay. Oh, you tried. <laughs> yeah, oh, I've okay. tried. Okay. I've tried. tried. All right. So I've tried it with one girl. Mm. She wasn't having it. Okay. But I think it was more because she didn't want to share. You get me? She didn't want to yeah. share the experience or everything. You get me? She wanted the dick. She, yeah. yeah. Or I mean, she wanted, yeah, whatever. But she then, the <laughs> so then it, it didn't work out. Okay. There was another girl that was down for it, but she was a little crazy because she was just down for too much shit. You know okay, what I mean? So yeah. I was like, all right, she went that. overboard. Yeah, yeah she went overboard. Much. Yeah, she was she was everywhere. But I think I do want a family. I want to mm -hmm. have like five, six kids or uh, yeah, as many okay. as you know she you know she can pop out. And I do think that when you reach a certain point, you know you kind of just have to get your own space and your own time. Just a quick trip to Colombia doesn't fucking hurt nobody. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm down for it. I'm going to take speaking my language right now. It's going to be longer than a quick trip for me when I go there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Yeah, so I I, I do think it's something, like girls won't understand, bro. They really yeah. won't understand. There's no emotional attachment to something you do with a girl, especially in Colombia. But I do think sometimes it is necessary. Like, I, like, I, I had a relationship with a girl at, two years ago as all this is starting off and she was she was the one but i just had to literally text another girl not even meet up with her or do anything just text another girl to realize how much that one sucks so i can appreciate this one more you get me yeah. it's just like depends what kind of approach you look at it true and that that's where i've been getting all these experiences you know what's from. crazy a lot of guys a lot of guys say this to me like a lot of older guys that are like rich and shit that i talk to they're like kind of what you're saying where it's like okay you go fuck around whatever and it actually ends up making you appreciate yeah, what you the way you have so much more. Yeah, but the girl it's, will never understand that. Never understand like, that. Never, but ever, but bro, yeah. we always say this like this. My thing is like men can like look at a handshake. Or, sorry, sex like a handshake. Yeah. You literally fuck and you leave. You can never look at that person again. Exactly. It's like it didn't even happen almost. Where it's like when women do it. And this is like where we, this is where like women hate us when we talk about like, yeah, I know. They, they get a little more like emotionally attached to the experience and yeah, whatever, it's right? True, it's true. But men can just like, bro, we can pop in, pop out. It's like, bro, I'll, I'll forget her name by the second I'm putting my clothes on. Bro. Yeah, yeah, you know exactly. I, mean? I, I won't even know what happened. Said and forget, bro. See, I just said, you said and forget that shit. <laughs> said and forget. Hold on, bro. but do you believe in, do you believe in marriage? Like getting married? I, you know, I mean, I'll get married, but I'm signing a prenup. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah, 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 I don't yeah. give a shit. Uh, pa Patrick, but David was talking about yep. it. He yep. was like, dude, you know, I'll get married all day, but what I worked for for 30 years, I'm not going to go out. Like, you're not entitled to shit. You know what yeah. I mean? It's you're, you're entitled to 
you know, being part of all, everything that I have because mm -hmm. you're the one, but you're not entitled to taking it away if we end up going our separate ways. You get yeah, me? I think like even when it comes to that, I think the idea is like, and this is kind of where my head's at, like my girl, I'm like, okay, I'm going to like, I'll promise to take care of you forever. So like, God forbid something doesn't, doesn't work out down the road. We have a family and kids and when we decide to go our separate ways, you're good, bro. I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to send you your check every month. Okay. You'll be fine. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you're the mother of my children. You were there. Oh, you're saying prenup first, but then that. Well, that that's what the contract's gonna say. Is gonna oh, say okay. the oh. contract's gonna say, yo, if we go our separate ways, I'm not gonna start like splitting, giving you everything. I'm just gonna set you up with like a fat check, 20, 30, 40k every month, whatever it is. So and you're, you're blessed. Yeah, yeah, so you're yeah, good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're also, because you're the mother of my children exactly, or whatever, exactly, blah blah. Exactly. So I gotta make sure you're good too. I don't want you like on the yeah. street. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. trying to say? It doesn't make sense. So that's the way I would do it, anyways. I agree. I'm down for kids. I don't know if I'm down to get married. I, bro, honestly, I think that is just for, I, I think it's something very traditional. Yeah. And I also think it's something that I don't want to say other people that are not like us, but more traditional people, yeah. they do it more for like the experience and the whole approval but of the we just said we, we said this the other day. We said they, they're doing it for the IG pic. Yeah. I think they're just doing it for the pictures, bro. Yeah. yeah. Like, what the fuck? Fuck that. I mean, I... I can see both sides of it. I can understand, like, from the traditional aspect, what it's supposed to mean. No, but it doesn't mean the same thing it used to mean. No, it's not. No, no, no. Parents no. got married, for example. It was a different world. Did you know that divorce has gone up? It's like divorce is like oh, 60, bro. 70 percent. Yeah, bro. It's, like, it's fucked. Yeah, yeah, it's fucked. Yeah, that's and actually, not. what a lot of people say is who have been married and divorced was like, apparently, like, and this is what just what I hear. It's not necessarily my thoughts, but like, it's just an added pressure for no reason. It's like if you had a good relationship. And now you got married. There's like this added pressure. Just like, bro, we'll go have the kids and just be together. It's yeah. the same fucking thing. Well, if it's up to me, I would not get married. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 bro, if, if you say it's usually for the female, it's usually for the woman. They want it. They want to do the white. Bro, I never met a guy that was like, yo, let's do it. Let's Fuck do it. Fuck no. Bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, never, I, I never met I one. I mean, guy. bro, like, dude, you, you have, like, if you have a kid with the guy, that's that's the commitment for life. You know what that's, I mean? That's like, more of a know, commitment than a kid than a marriage. All day. So you I know what I mean? You, you, you could break a contract for a marriage but you can't break off a kid you know what yeah, I mean? like that's stuck facts. with you forever so yeah. I, I feel like if you have a kid i don't think marriage is necessary yeah so when's alex g gonna have a pop out a little little you not yet not yet i'm gonna i'm gonna i want to test out the strategy more you know yeah, i want to okay. see, <laughs> yeah, yeah. see how far i could take the juan you know what <laughs> yeah. i mean yeah and um I, but my, my goal would be under 30 yeah you know i mean okay. i want i want to yeah. start the i mean yeah. that's what i said too and then i turned 30 and i'm like yeah, that, yeah, you get me? So that's just what I have in mind right now. Yeah. So just remember, with a kid, you can't really set and forget it. No, I know. That kid's gonna, you can't forget <laughs> the kid, you know? The kid's going to be there. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, I can leave this cat alone for three days, and I'll literally have no fucking idea. Yeah. But, I, you know, I'm not I'm not ready. For me, It's I'm not. I'm just not ready to have that commitment and that responsibility yeah. to dedicate 100% of my time to it. I'm just not ready for that. Now, if it, if it were to, you know, happen in two, three years, all right, I'd 100% accept it and I'll yeah. drop off other things just to focus on that. That's sure. that's the new priority. But right now, the new priority is, so when I do have it, everything's set up and I could dedicate 100% of my time to it. Yeah. Because right now, I'm not set up to dedicate 100% of my time. Yeah. But do you think you'll ever be at a time in your life where you'll, you'll like, stop wanting to work and be successful? And Because we already talked and you're already working on other projects, yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, I have, I have a number that I want. And once I get that number, it's what is, like, needed for me to just dedicate to new things in so life. What's the number? What's bro? the number? You're going to manifest it right now on yeah, this podcast. 100 M's. 100 M's. 100 M's. I'm 100 actually not that far. Yeah, I'm actually not that far. Yeah. yeah. But it's just... 100 m's just to see like all right you did that yeah if you could do that you could fucking do anything you know yeah, what i mean facts. so now it's yeah. just setting yourself up for a new like that's my goal and i stay true to what i the, say the myself. thing is the thing is as much as i want to believe you bro <laughs> i don't believe you you're gonna get the like all right that, that fucking <laughs> screen's gonna go up on, on the fucking wall of <laughs> yeah fame. Gonna, you need more screens <laughs> and bro. then yeah. you're gonna be like all right i'm looking for the one one billion now and you're gonna be like all right bet you're gonna keep going so with the hundred M's, I have a fat house in Star Island. I have all the cars, Island, the yacht. You know what I mean? I have, I have, you know, the the cars, the the the, the yacht. I have the, the penthouse just for the weekend, whatever. My parents have houses. I already got, you know, my parents' houses. They both have houses. I uh, have the watches. Have a jet. Like everything that success could buy, you got. 
Yeah. Then you're gonna say, well, why don't I just buy a sports team now? <laughs> you're gonna start. You're gonna start. <laughs> I'm telling you. But See? I can do that as I'm taking should, on this new challenge. Of course. That's of course. my that that's my mindset and my approach to it as yeah. of right now. Yeah. And I've I've had that for the last year. Okay. So I've, I've, I'm sticking to it so far. So okay. may, maybe no, I'm you, fucking wrong. You, you know? should buy a sports team now. You just put the, yeah, <laughs> that's a great idea. I'm I'm, ta- but you, you, listen, you know how it goes already. The more that you make and the more that you see in life, the more that your, your appetite gets bigger. I agree. You know? yeah. and, and it's happened to me. I, I thought once I was going to make my first meal, I thought I was going to just you were be good. set for life. Yeah. I made a meal and I felt like a bitch. Yeah, but the, <laughs> only, the, only, the only reason you made the meal was because you had that mindset. Because I had bigger aspirations. Exactly. Agree, and yeah. it's always going to get there, bro, I feel like. But I do feel like 100 M's is plenty of fucking money in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like there's plenty. Bro, you could do a lot of uh, shit I was going to say, well, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll come back, we'll come back well, when you're there, okay, bro. Okay, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Right, yeah I, finish yeah. that off quick too, though. <laughs> yeah, you can. We're going to yeah, do yeah. a little rapid fire, though, okay? Okay. We're going to do, help me yeah, do yeah. this one? Yeah, I got you, I got you. All right. All right, the first one, okay? What's the largest profit you made in a single day of trading? $121,000 in one single day. That's USD. USD, yeah. That's USD. good, bro. That's very good. Holy yeah. fuck. Yeah. What's the most money you've lost in a single day of trading? I think it was almost like $80,000 in one day. Okay. $80,000 one yeah, day? Yeah, I think it was like seven. Uh, yeah. Like, we lost that. Yeah, we lost that. Yeah, we yeah, lost yeah. that. 80000 Yeah, day. I know where you guys lost it. I lost it too, bro. I lost three hundred in that shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, I was part of that. I mean, like, I was a Yo, part oh, of it. Yeah? Oh, like, yeah? Just how you guys were. I was just with another client in there. Oh, so oh, we lost. Oh, okay. Okay, we lost so we money all lost together. together. Well, I well, I, well, I'm not counting that. I lost like 300k in that shit. Oh, and that was one day. No, that was fucking like over time. Yeah, over like six months. I mean, like my personal trade, 70k, 70, 80k, so, that's 70, what I'm 80K lost. One, yeah. one day. But I lost 300k in that bullshit. Yeah, that was bullshit. Yeah. Okay, we We're lost money together. Yeah, I yeah. love that. I love that. Okay, <laughs> yeah, right? what would you pick one of the two options? Okay, flip a coin for 20 million. Or a guaranteed five hundred thousand. We just give it to you. Don't even flip the coin. I'll flip it for twenty all day, bro. Yeah, I don't need five hundred. Let's, go. Let's, go. You know, Let's you know go. you're talking about. Let's go. Um, do you remember the one trade that changed your life? No. 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 I do remember the one shift in trading that did change my life, which is okay. risk management. Okay. As soon as I figured that out, everything completely changed. Okay. Damn. Did you ever have a day where? You had a trade going well. You were setting and forgetting and everything looked good. And then it completely went red. 100%. And you I, lost your shirt. I think I've seen it. Yeah, it happens all the time. Story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's like every other day. Last week. Yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah. Okay. And what, what is the most amount of trades you've taken in the day? I think like four. Four? And that's pushing it. That's a yeah. lot. Okay. I was going to say like from the outside, not really knowing much. It doesn't really sound like a lot. I mean, my, my goal should be to take anywhere from one or two trades a week max. Wow. So I'm probably taking eight trades a month, 10 trades a month. I mean, to, to, I mean, compared to other people. Yeah. But to me that you're like throttling it there. I'm going hundred yeah. percent taking 10 trades a month. What's Damn. the most underrated aspect of successful day trading? That you're supposed to trade every single day to make money in trading. Okay. That's a complete fucking false yeah you don't have to day trade you don't have to trade every single day to be a day trader okay and i want to know would you recommend someone leave their job at dunkin donuts to start day trading i think you should leave your job at dunkin donuts or anywhere <laughs> to get into day to, to, to get into day trading as soon as you've made enough money from trading to cover a whole year worth of expenses okay. not if you have a whole year worth of expenses and then get started into trading no because mm-hmm. you can literally burn a whole year just learning trading. Once you learn trading and then you've made money, then you can quit because now you know the skill set, you already put in the time, and now it's just up from there. Okay. The big, big difference from there. 100%. And what advice would you give to someone aiming to start day trading? Just start, man. You're one YouTube search away from becoming a somewhat semi experienced trader off a couple of videos. People think, Forex, they don't even know what the actual word means. Forex means foreign exchange. Yeah. So you're about two, three hours of YouTube videos from realizing that it's not that complicated. So just yeah. get started today. Amazing. Yeah, can I look at your stories? I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Like, <laughs> it's fucking charts, all these fucking numbers. It's yeah, just yeah. going everywhere. I'm like, 0. 0.20. Like dollar <laughs> signs everywhere. I'm like, but what the everywhere. fuck? <laughs> I see CAD, Japan. And I'm like, <laughs> the fuck? Like, why does why is I say CAD, Japan, bro? What it's the easy, fuck bro. am I looking it's, at? It's easy, AED, man. It's I don't know what shit, man. So like, now that you're, I guess that you've, you know, you've seen a lot of success up until this point. What, what kind of plans do you have moving forward? What kind of projects are you working on now moving forward? So I'm working on a big project. Very, very big project. Um, I'm taking the 
let's see i'm t i'm taking the the approach that a lot of people like in trading which is the whole funding route yeah. and i'm taking that into a new niche that is a gigantic beast and it's never you know been done in okay. i technically can't say it yeah, you okay. don't have to say but it. you guys can put two and two together you guys okay. when you when do you think that's going to be uh launched it'll be launched in january Six. so nice. january, january 15th that's the launch date okay. um er everything's built out text built out the idea is built out it's more of the logistic website issues kind of back end stuff that everybody kind of has to figure out but that's the new project Let's see what happens there and you're going to be dedicating all your time now to this I, I, I dedicate a piece of the business and then to that. So I have like, I have a very specific niche, which is yeah. just like marketing and relationships. Yeah. And I take care of that. The other guys take care of the rest. True. And I just focus on that all day. True. And you're also going harder even on another aspect with the content and your personal brand. You're yeah, bro. This, I'm, right? I'm like now for me, everything changed for me. I don't know if you guys have seen that guy, Jordan, the guy that, he, yes. yeah, 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 you trader, guys, yeah, 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 that Jordan, but I can he, oh, he got cancer and he beat cancer then he got it back again and then they beat he beat it again so they took it out of him again it's like on his spine okay. and as he's getting the procedure doing chemo and all that stuff the fucking kid's trading and he's on a 21 week winning streak so meaning Holy every fuck. single week he's been profitable week after week yeah. during what well, pre-surgery during the surgery post-surgery and then now post like therapy and everything and he is still winning week after he just bought his first supercar last week which is an r8 so once i saw that because he i bro he literally came to me with negative money showed him trading showed him set and forget and with the profits he was able to pay for the therapies and all that wow. shit that he has to do bro. so that when i figured that out i'm like holy fuck this 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 just goes bigger than me because uh -huh. without what i without the knowledge that i gave to this guy and the tips he probably wouldn't be here right now yeah. like the you know it would probably like literally like literally like not be here right now wow so now that i kind of saw that unfold in front of me i'm like all right so this is bigger than i am and a lot of people out there need it more than i can ever imagine yeah now now, now there's like something yeah, yeah it's something bigger you can would you can say that's with. your biggest like motivation when you hear how you've changed these people's life that's what keeps you going bro it, bro it gets me so hyped dude the other day th this one got me mad <laughs> the other day i was in the gym I was in Boxer in Brickle. Yeah, yeah. This guy, I'm just working out normal. This guy, I mean, I didn't get mad. I was just more like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> like it's more like a reality shock. Yeah. Um, I'm working out in Boxer, just chilling. This guy comes and like, bro, dude, thank you so much, man. I appreciate everything you do. And, you know, I'm just thinking it's a normal, you know, fan taking a picture. He's like, dude, but like, I don't think you understand what you've done for me. I'm like, well, what have I done for you? He's like, bro, come outside. Bro, the dude bought a Maybach with the trades that I had been oh, sending oh on Instagram. God, <laughs> and I was like, cause I, I got mad with myself. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm literally undervaluing who the fuck I am and what yeah. I'm doing. And that's where I just started. That's what, that's when I came out with the course and I'm like, all right, now I got to monetize this shit somehow. Yes, yeah. yes. So that, uh, that was probably one of the most impactful ones that I saw right in front of my face. Cause yeah. it's like, dude, like look at the trade I made. 80k on wednesday and i think two weeks later he made like another 50 and then he showed me the withdrawal and he showed me the keys bro <laughs> that's insane like, but you know what we it's funny like that tends to be a common thing with a lot of successful people we talk to where you're sort of you undervalue like who you are and the value you put out because it's like it's just normal everyday knowledge for you mm -hmm. but people are watching you changing their lives off this shit, bro. Yeah. Right. Like literally the man showed you a Maybach off of free shit you were putting on Instagram. Yeah. It was kind of trippy. <laughs> like, that's crazy. So yeah, it's not even like you're mad. You're just like, damn, I'm actually that guy. Like you, you start realizing you're like, wait a minute, I got to like see myself in that light now. Yeah. Right. And that it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword, right? Mm -hmm. It can be, you can look at it in a good way or you can look at it in a bad way, but because I undervalued myself for such a long period of time, it got spread out there so fast. Mm -hmm that I'm that guy it actually paid off and it, and now it's paying off. You get yeah. me? Cause now I built the community and now you, I, I give them, you know, this bunch of new stuff so they can change their lives with. So it's, I say it's more of like timing, bro. Mm -hmm. Everything is timing. You guys got crazy timing too, bro. Like yeah. I, I wouldn't say that it's difficult, but you just have to know when to time it at the right time. Bro. It's, yeah. It's such absolutely. a, but like, I think success just simply comes down to comparing it, Comparing it to a car. A car can't function if all the 
engine is running properly, the transmission, the oil, the tires, everything has to work perfectly for the car to run good. Same thing with success. You can't be missing one factor because it just won't work for a long period of time. It's yeah. The same thing. No, it's it's the it's funny because like, you say timing, right? But like the reality of it is that like you showed up every single day. Yeah. And what happens if you didn't show up that one day? That could have been the day that everything sort of changed or something clicked, right? So it's like you show up every day and some days mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like anything is really happening. Yeah. But then it's one phone call, one text message, one DM where it's like, whoa, if I wasn't there in that moment, I didn't show up, none of this would have happened. Yeah. I agree. Right. So I think it's a consistency aspect too. Well, you say there's like, there's, um, there is such thing as an overnight success. It just took 10 years to get to that. Night. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. To get there. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you think, do you think, cause I, I'm talking to you now and you're super humble. You welcome us to your home. Do you think the money has changed you at all or will change you? I think money makes you more of who you are. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think I've always, I mean, I was raised by very, by the book, Cuban parents. You know what I mean? My dad came to Miami in a raft. And wow. the, you know, he came here with fucking nothing. And wow. my, my, when my dad came to Miami in a raft, they, they took him to jail and he was under the bridge in Miami. I don't know. If, have you guys ever seen Scarface? Yes. You know, at the beginning of Scarface that they're under that bridge. Yeah. Yes. My, my dad was under that bridge, bro. Oh, come <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah. Not, not during the breakout, but that bridge was going on for a couple years. Uh -huh. Like every refugee that would come, they would put him there for about a month. It was like a holding period. Yeah. And then they would let him go or do whatever with them. So since my parents came here with nothing, they gave me very strict rules and very strict guidelines to follow. And mm -hmm. I was taught morals. I was taught respect. And uh, money has made me more of that where I am now. Like yeah. I, I can literally get somebody and change your life completely. Like my, like my, my filmer, this guy was a fucking mess, dude. This guy was all over the place, but I saw something in him. Mm -hmm. I saw a talent. I saw him been able to make something out of it, but the dude was sloppy. He was messy, had no manners. Bro, now you look at him, he's like a proper guy. You know what I mean? Cause you just you put that out there. You know yeah. what I mean? So I feel like I guess I'm good to help people or change people, and money's made me more of that. You know what's crazy? It's with us, like we we and I don't know, because some some people we talk to haven't had the same experience. But for us, ever since we've kind of tapped into Miami and started meeting people here and whatever, like I feel like everyone here is like willing to help each other. Yeah. I don't know, back home, like in Toronto, like where we're from. That energy is non-existent, bro. I mean, also because they're probably hating on you guys, bro. You guys made it out. You guys, yeah. you guys made yeah. it out the hood. You know what I mean? Yeah. You guys yeah, made it out. True. So they're probably not supportive of it because they're, they're, yeah. they're still stuck in there. You come now to a new fresh spot. And what I see in you guys is a person just like me, just trying to get better and just grow and help everybody around you and grow. And I see that and I see just, you know, a connection and you just want to keep it going. There's no reason to make it stop. Yeah. But when you have somebody back from your hometown that they're not even willing to put in the time to do that, they kind of just want to hold you back so you yes. don't keep going. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, but we're thankful, bro. We're thankful, obviously, for this relationship. We appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it's, my, Miami's been good to us, bro. So... That's why we're trying. We're trying to make the permanent move you guys in the should. process you, of you it. Guys Maybe are, down the street from here. Who knows? Yeah, you guys are tripping. You guys got to come here like now. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I know, I know, ASAP. Yeah. But uh, before before we get to our final question, our famous question, I'm curious, dude. You have like you have my dream car outside. Oh, the color, the color. Yeah, okay. if, if you can see it in the shot, I don't know, but color, yeah. I what's what has been your favorite car to own so far? Honestly, it might sound kind of you know. <laughs> fucked up <laughs> but probably the drift car yeah the drift car is by far the funnest car i've ever yeah. had because yeah. i can literally you know curb rash it i can hit the front bumper against the parking it doesn't matter it's yeah. fun yeah. you get me versus these other cars you have to be a little bit more careful which at the end of the day i don't give a shit bro like <laughs> i have the i have the sv which is one out of 600 yeah uh in the world and bro, I have a Christmas tree on top of it right now. You know what I mean? Which is, which is <laughs> you know, fucking you know, like I don't, I don't, I'm not attached to personal things because if that one leaves, there's 599 more. Probably just costs a little bit more money you could buy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anything that you could buy with money, to me, I don't give a shit about. Yeah. So, but the funnest out of the, all of them is the drift car. The drift sure. car. Yeah. Okay. So then with that being said, I got to ask you the famous question. We're obviously the MBH podcast, Money Buys Happiness. So I want to know if Alex G believes money buys happiness. I do think money buys happiness temporarily. Okay. But I do think it does reach a certain point where you can't. Yeah. So if you strategically make a lot of money, strategically buy stuff that will get you happy for a period of time, but not the max happiness. So if you're going to buy a Lambo and you have enough to get the best one, don't get the best one. Get, this, get the first one. 
get tired of it and get the next one. So then you're happy again and you can extend that happiness as long as you can. But I do think it could reach a point where money does not buy happiness. Yeah. Maybe hundred hundred M's. Yeah. Let's say so probably hundred M's. Yeah, yeah. So, so then once I get the hundred M's and money can no longer buy happiness, that's where I got the new challenge coming in, which is making the family. Yeah. Which okay. that, that should make so hundred M's family. Yeah. So, but yeah, you're close, bro. So maybe like what? 25. Probably next I see year, some yeah. little some little kids <laughs> running around. Here. Fucking three weeks, you're gonna. Have <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so, listen, man. Appreciate you. Bro. Thank you so much, bro. No, bro Thank you for inviting us here. Beautiful space. Like I said, I know it's been a while since we tried to make this happen, but of course. I'm happy we did. Keep changing lives, bro. Yeah, yeah. man. I'm and bro, you, you guys are killing it, man. You guys, you guys keep going, bro, and keep Thank doing you. what you guys are doing. I, you, you know, I, I saw what you guys put out there, and you guys want to get loved for who you guys are. That's the main thing, bro. So you guys just keep being who you guys are bro thank you man thank yeah. you appreciate that bro no for sure it's uh it's a pleasure it's huh? a fucking pleasure to be let's here let's go give away some money yeah right, guys we made it this far and i know you did because this episode had so much fucking value yeah. you know what to do like subscribe leave a comment comment anything literally anything we'll take it just fucking push the algo okay and yo you might you might see this guy on snapchat soon eh? so just get ready <laughs> i'm just putting that out there manifesting this but uh on that note jay 